On bill weekend on in campaign of Egon Chibai to the Olympic in a Kamsunga Ding a suicidal to breaking the world record. She here, author, editor, and thinkable who Benny's Prasad. A look who yet I hear. Thank you, Jesus. I'm an Indian. Record 245 countries in six years. She here. Hello, sir. Welcome to Church Sanper. Thank you. You have been traveling a lot, don't you? Have jet lag. You come back just three days from Sri Lanka. <laughs> no, well, I am used to this. Mm -hmm. So I was just uh, about two weeks ago. I was in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and I was on a uh, thing. That's when I released my book. So I was mm -hmm. promoting the book there, and then came back. Uh, then came to Holland for a day, mm -hmm. and then to Bangalore for a day, and then went to Sri Lanka mm -hmm. for five days, and then came back uh, home to Bangalore for two days, and then I'm here. So. I'm used to this. It is mm. not something that is new. So when you are traveling around, there is long flight. And how do you make use of your time? You read or you just sleep? Or you I sleep. Mm. I, most of my flight journeys, mm. I sleep because that's the place where I can take rest. Mm. So you have been traveling a lot. Most of your time, most of your lifetime is spent on the air, huh? Yep. Most <laughs> of my time I spend time in the air, actually. So besides sleeping, how do you make use? You, you meditate on the plane or are you think no. about your sermon? Or? No, I just sleep. Mm -hmm. the, most of my journeys on the plane mm -hmm. is I just sleep because I, for me, that's the only time I can rest. Because mm -hmm. as soon as I land, mm -hmm. then I have series of meetings that have been planned. So that takes up a lot of my rest time. So, Dr. Benny, we have been listening to your testimony and we are so inspired. Can you please tell us once again through your uh, account what what's life has been for you until you become a world record breaker, traveling the, uh, more than uh, 245 countries? Yeah. So, I grew up in a Christian family mm. and uh, my father was an aerospace scientist. My mm. mom worked uh, in a Christian radio station called FIBA Radio. Mm. So being the first born in the family, I was expected to become like my father, mm. which was a very typical expectation in South India. Mm. And I could not keep up to my father's expectations. And I struggled as a child because uh, I was not one of those who was good at memorizing things and just mm. writing whatever I've memorized. But I was one who had more questions mm. uh, about various things, about from life to mm. education. Mm. So when, I, when my questions were not answered, mm. I lost my interest in studies mm. and I became a failure mm. and in my 10th standard I was uh, thrown out of school. They said mm. I was not fit for education. I failed in my studies, in my character. I also failed in my health where mm. medically the doctors had given me about six months to live mm. because of the complications mm. from asthma as well as uh, from arthritis and other sicknesses in my body. Mm. So by 16, I had no hope to live mm. where I have no education, I have no character, I have no talents, I have no future. Mm. So everybody told me that you will be a failure mm. forever in your life. Mm. So I found why should I even live anymore in this world when everybody mm. thinks that I'm a worthless child. Mm. And I contemplated to commit suicide at the age of 16. Mm. And during that time when I went to a youth camp, mm. 
I heard the audible voice of Jesus Christ on the second day. Now, I was not looking for Jesus. Mm. I did not um, believe that Jesus had a plan for my life. Mm. Um, in fact, I had no connection uh, mm. about being a Christian. I was fed up with life, fed up with God and fed up mm. with everything. So when Jesus spoke to me, saying mm. that even though you are called useless, I want you, I can transform your life and make you a new person. Mm. I surrendered my broken life into the hands of Jesus Christ. Mm. And he transformed me and made me a new person. So mm. I started off my fresh new walk as a follower of Jesus Christ at the age of 16. Mm. At 19, I picked up uh, the guitar in the Bible college and practiced. Mm. And in 2001, is mm. when Jesus gave me the vision to travel to every country in the world by 2010. How exactly does he give you the vision? How do you come to the realization of the vision? Ah, well, I was praying and I was asking God, mm. God, what do you want to do with my life? Mm. Um, because now I have new life mm. and I have passions, I have dreams, but what is your dream for my life? As I was praying, mm. I could um, hear him speak to me saying that, Benny, this is my plan for you, is to mm. travel to every country in the world by 2010. Mm. So I said, how can I travel the world? Because you need a lot of money to travel. Mm. And I was a Viva missionary at the time and we learned to live by faith. We don't have any salary. Mm. And I know that many times in the ministry, people keep asking for money mm. in order to do what God has called them to do. Mm. But I did not want to be one among them. Mm. Because I, for me, it was very clear mm. that if Jesus has called me, then mm. he should be providing for me mm. because I'm working for him. So I took a step of faith. I made a commitment with Jesus. I said, God, if this is your plan, because this is mm. impossible to mm. travel to every country. I said, if this is what you want me to do, then you have to provide for me mm. financially. You have to provide for me the strength to travel. You have to provide me the favor to get my visas. So I made a commitment that I will never ask for money, will never borrow money. I will never take a loan from the bank mm. or trust the credit card. Mm. So with this, I started off my new journey of so, traveling uh, the world. Where do you get the first breakthrough? Which was the first country you traveled? Well, I did not get my first breakthrough, mm. but I did get mm. to travel. Mm. As see, there are two things here. Mm. My first country that I traveled to was Sri Lanka mm. on 15th of August 1998. Where do you get the money and how does it come about? What you got a that, for, from yeah, that church? particular trip, Sri Lanka mm. trip, was mm. just it was an organization mm. that was having a conference mm. and they took care of all my travels mm. to go there. Mm. But my concert tours of the vision that what Jesus gave me in 2001. Mm. That my first country was Russia, mm. but I was deported back from Russia because I refused to pay a bribe of fifty dollars. Mm. Because for me, my principles mm. are more important than achieving a goal. Mm. And because I refused to pay the bribe, why? Uh, why should what, what? Which particular bribe should you have to pay? What was the bribe? No, at the entrance when I arrived in Moscow at the airport. Mm. Mm. And it was a common practice for them to accept bribes mm. or ask for bribes. So they asked me for $50 mm. and I said, no, I will not. And I told them I'm a Christian. Mm. And because I refused to pay, mm. they detained me in the airport for 30 hours. Mm. And after 30 hours, they deported me back to India. Mm. So that was my first journey, actually. Mm. But I thank God for giving me the strength to hold on to Mm. Uh, my convictions mm. and uh, God provided mm. what was needed. At that moment when you were deported from Russia, did you have a feeling, Lord, you have called me to travel all the world. What is happening with this fast travel? Yes. Did you, did you question God? Oh, yes. I questioned God and mm. I was mm. completely broken and shattered. Mm. And uh, yes, it really was very, very difficult for me.
love that goes from east to west and runs as deep as it is wide. You know all our hopes, Lord, you know all our fears, and words cannot express the love we feel, but we long for you to hear. So the first country was Sri Lanka, Russia, you were deported back. So do you start counting the numbers? The score is only two. Where will be the next one? <laughs> How does it happen? I never counted hmm. the countries. For me, hmm. I was very grateful that I could even go to one country. Hmm. So when, uh, when I started to travel hmm. in 2002 is when I started my world travels. Hmm with the vision that God had given me that I'll travel to every country by 2010. Mm. But I just traveled as uh, God opened the doors. Mm. But by 2004, it became very evident that mm. I'm really traveling the world because by 2004, mm. I was traveling to 50 countries every year. Mm. So the traveling of around the world became a reality by 2004 actually. Mm. And from then onwards, I was just traveling. I knew that this is a vision God had given. By 2009 is when I mm. came to know that there was a world record. Mm. And uh, the world record was 218 countries in six years, 10 months and seven days. Mm. By then, I only was running short a few countries. Mm. By 2010, I was able to break the world record. Mm. And I All thank for the sake of Jesus Christ? Yes, all for the sake of... Mm. sharing the gospel can you tell sake. me some interesting facts about how you got invited or how the opportunity come about one two countries it of course can happen but 245 countries plus how does it happen the whole lot story would be a long time to tell but some of the interesting ones well most of my travels mm. it was not just based on an invitation mm. you know uh, like for example one country will be inviting me Mm. But then I will end up going to 14 other countries where I would tell them, you know, I am coming to France. Mm. So then friends in Germany will be there or mm. Czech Republic, you know, mm. or in England. Mm. So like that, you know, mm. countries nearby would mm. get covered like that. And I would go and minister. I would go mm. and mostly I did was mm. uh, sharing the gospel, mm. uh, doing, uh, uh, sharing my testimony performing on my guitar, mm. uh, sharing a message of hope to people. So I never asked for money. Mm. All my travels, money mm. was not the intention of my travel. So mm. as a result, it did not matter whether it's a small crowd or a big crowd. Mm. It didn't matter at all for me. As mm. long as I'm able to touch somebody's life, that's mm. all that mattered. So that is how I travel to all these countries. and. Uh, mm. Some invitations were big, some were just small. Mm. Uh, like for example, I got an invitation from the government of North Korea to come and perform for the official um, events. Mm. I got invited uh, for the Olympic Games or the FIFA World Cup. But so, at the same so time, when, when I also you, went mm. into smaller houses mm. and uh, there were home groups in Maldives mm. or in Cuba mm. or in the Middle East, you know. Mm. So it varied from big to small. Mm. So when you were called by North Korea government, did they know that you were a Christian singer who witnessed for Christ? What did they tell you? Do they tell you very strictly the protocol, what you can do and what you should not do, no preaching as such? Well, for sure they would know that I'm a Christian because they would mm. do six months of background check mm. of every artist who's been invited. And uh, for sure they would know when they go and check on me. Mm. But it's a miracle that they still accepted. But yeah, mm. they gave me certain protocols, mm. what I have to follow. So did you still uh, sing about gospel song or you are, sing, you, you are, you are fine tuning your well, song? Well, first of all, I don't sing. I am mm. an instrumental musician. Yes. So I performed, yes, mm. I performed uh, mm. two worship songs mm. uh, on the stage. Mm. And um, yeah, but uh, by God's grace, I could still get away with that. Mm. And uh, off the stage, I met up with the, with the officials as well as with other artists where I could share my faith with them too.
let's talk a little bit, bit about the uh, the hat you're wearing right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> what what's the controversy? Why is this uh, this hat typical hat is so attached to you? Can you tell us the, the testimony? I've been listening to some of your other interviews, so this might be a different yeah. audience. So can you tell us? A little the bit hat about this came into the picture in 2010 mm -hmm. when I had just broken the world record, mm -hmm. and uh, for me. I know that mm. what I have achieved is not with my own strength. Mm. Uh, it is not with my own money. It is mm. not with my own convictions. Mm. It had to be Jesus who could journey along, protecting mm. me from the most dangerous places, giving me strength sometimes to travel to three countries in a day. Mm. So I wanted Jesus to be part of my journey, even in the midst of celebrations. Mm. But uh, CNN was the first news channel and they mm. clearly told me, mm. I had a hat which said, thank you, Jesus. Mm. They told me to take off that hat mm. because they said that is a religious statement mm. and we are a secular channel. So I was asking God, God, how can I mm. incorporate you as mm. part of my story? Because in a news channel, mm. they will pick what they want mm. and they'll leave the rest. And for them, they might not necessarily think that mm. adding Jesus part of my journey is mm. important. But for me, it is very important mm. because I know from mm. where to where Jesus brought me. Mm. So that is when Jesus helped me to design this hat. It mm. says, thank you, Jesus, I'm an Indian, which is for sure, I'm proud to be an Indian. Mm. I am uh, thankful to Jesus that uh, I was born in India mm. and he could use me as an Indian to make an impact around the world and I'm thankful to Jesus. So that's where the uniqueness of the hat is mm. that uh, nobody can stop me from wearing this hat because mm. it is also a matter of being uh, prideful of being an Indian. So when it comes to witnessing, there is, I've been listening to the, the, the university talk you have in some, some other countries. No matter what people try to stop you, you can be always creative about witnessing for Jesus. I think no one has done that better than what you have been doing. How creatively are you sharing the message of God in other some communist countries, uh, like uh, some uh, Islamic countries which are very fanatic or conservative? Yeah, for me, I purely share Jesus from my personal journey. Mm. I don't proselytize, I don't try to push people, mm. I don't try to change people. Mm. It is my sharing of the gospel is based on my experiences and my mm. convictions. And so far, whenever I've shared from that perspective, mm. now people have been very receptive, quite mm. open, mm. and some of them even question, mm. what does it mean for you to have this kind of a relationship? Mm. And uh, so for me, what Jesus has done mm. is such an integral part of my journey that it is part of my performance, mm. it is part of my speeches when I give motivational talks in colleges mm. or universities, it is part of that. So it is just an organic way of sharing it. It's not just like I am planning mm. to, to preach to somebody. It is my journey, my mm. journey of being hopeless, being suicidal, being a high school dropout mm. to being a successful musician as well as a world record holder mm. and when I incorporate my faith in Jesus mm. as part of my journey of success uh, I've not seen people being opposing to that mm. message and we will use the words we know to tell you what I know some God you are but words are not enough to tell you of our love so listen to our hearts If words could fall like rain From these lips of mine And if I had a thousand years to speak Lord, I would still run out of time So if you listen to my heart Every bit would say the life thank you for the truth thank you for the way you have been in, you have been a champion of uh, how to overcome suicide mm. so 
looking at the present scenario even in this local there is a high rate of suicide tendency how often people get connected with you because of your testimony how reassuring is that for people have you ever got a phone call benny i've been listening to your testimony and that changed my life so this give me hope can you tell me some of the interesting encounters that you have with oh people? yeah uh, on a very regular basis people do contact hmm. and uh, my testimony on mm. YouTube, especially where people watch and they mm. write back to me. Mm. I've seen that it's been a very effective way of opening up to my mm. journey mm. and uh, to my world of being a failure mm. uh, and being realistic. You know, mm. many times in our culture, we mm. only try to showcase all the good things. Mm. But a lot of the things that we have gone through in the past is hidden. Mm. Whereas what I've done is I've opened up my life to my hurts and my pain, mm. to being suicidal, to mm. reaching the world of success. Mm. So when I've shared these things, mm. it has brought hope to people who are going through that. Mm. Many times people do call me or mm. they write and we even have a center in Bangalore called Chai 316, mm. which is mainly focusing on the area of mental health. So what we do is uh, we reach out to young college students who are suicidal depressed and lonely even this morning i got a call from my staff mm. saying that there was one girl sitting outside very depressed she was crying and she was suicidal and as soon as we opened the cafe she walked in mm. and she poured out and our uh, what we do is 80 percent listening and 20 percent talking mm. we are not a commercial cafe mm. we are a cafe where we want to impact mm. by rescuing people who are depressed and who are suicidal Mm. So that's what our mission is, that's what we do there. So as part of my journey, mm. even the cafe is very much part of mm. helping people to choose life. So mm. I tell a lot of young boys and girls mm. is to open up and share rather than hide their pain mm. and their hurts. Mm. The world is hurting, but at the same time you have to go and open up. Mm. And those who are doing well, give your time to listen to people's problems. Many times we are there to celebrate people's achievements. Mm. Now, if you're not there for a celebration, it's no big deal. Mm. But if you're not there to a person who is hurting, mm. that can make a big impact actually. Mm. So I tell people that, you know, open up your homes, mm. open up your hearts and your minds and your time to mm. people who are hurting mm. so that you can be there at the point of their need mm. and uh, help them to overcome their challenges. Mm. You have been there known that the situation at the lowest point of being depressed. After running your ministry as a Thai cafe uh, where young people can open up, are you shocked and surprised the amount of the, the number and the, the stories that have been, is it overwhelming? How, is it beyond your imagination? Not really because mm. after doing my background study and mm. other things, with what is happening today, mm. you know, it is not shocking to see what is happening mm. with regards to depression and suicide. Mm. Um, but we want to be available to people. So mm. the reason we even mm. started something like this mm. is because there is not much mm. um, that's been done in the area of mental health. Mm. And uh, so we wanted to be a place for young people mm. without having to do with money, mm. without having to have a price tag, but mm. reaching out to a point of need that they are at. So mm. I am not shocked because Bangalore has been the suicide capital of India for a long time. Mm. But uh, what I am surprised is there is very little that's mm. been done in the area of mental health. Mm. Also, there is very little trust Mm. that people have when it comes to a counsellor. Mm. So that's why we opened an open cafe where mm. people can just come without an agenda mm. and they can come and share. What's the percentage that they overcome? How does it impact having come to your counselling centre? Does it make a change or some people despite get, getting the counselling, they still go ahead with the suicide? How is, how is the counselling effective? Yeah. So far, by God's grace, I can say that Mm. Everyone who has come for counselling at our mm. centre mm. have chosen to live. Mm. None of them have gone and killed themselves. So there are visitors who have come, who mm. have just come once, 
mm. and they've gone and mm. some of them sadly have committed suicide mm. Mm. but they just came to see the place mm. but the ones who have mm. come for counseling mm. so far mm. have uh, gone back um, and their cha- lives have been transformed like for example there was one guy who was an engineering student mm. who had 25 back papers and he mm. was struggling he was suicidal depressed and uh, we counseled him for over two months mm. finally went back uh, mm. um, and finished his 25 back mm. papers he cleared them and now he's working as an engineer so mm. we have stories like that mm. uh, but so far whoever has come mm. we were able to help them get over the challenges of being suicidal so does that equate equates to the conclusion that every person who tried to commit suicide had they were given the opportunity to speak up or if there is someone to know that if they know that someone cares and want to listen could that be prevented yes according to our experience hmm. at chai 316 we have hmm. seen that actually hmm. is when we were available for them at hmm. the point of their need hmm. and showing love and care by even giving our time hmm. that has prevented committing suicide looking at the statistics most of the people who commit suicide they feel that there is no light at the end of the tunnel how much do you how much can you reach out to people there in Bangalore how can we let know people who have this tendency that there is someone who cares well again we are limited we are Mm. small in number Mm. we can only do how much we can Mm. right so whoever walks in Mm. we we are there for them we don't do online counseling mm. we don't do phone counseling mm. because that goes beyond our capacity mm. so that's why whoever comes to our cafe is mm. once we are able to reach out to because mm. there are people who are hurting in the other parts of india mm. and they would call up and they will say you know i want to bring my son or can i come we tell them you have to come in person we don't do anything online mm. because our our manpower is limited Mm. So, what I would say is that if mm. people can turn into listening to people, mm. then listening itself becomes healing mm. and they can become a blessing to others. See, most of them who are going through a depression, mm. uh, it is there at the, at the starting phase. Mm. And if we can be there at the early stages, then we can mm. prevent them into mm. getting into something more clinical mm. in that way. You have been this own and you have been a black sheep of the family looking at the, uh, the, uh, the way how the world sees it at the beginning at the age of 16 no education have lost a character so how do people in your society your family and your parents see you now after this, this beautiful journey yeah now they are all proud of me they mm. use my testimony as an example mm. yeah life has changed completely mm. for me and god has blessed me and the mm. same people who used to talk bad about me mm. have used me as an example. So I thank Jesus Christ for that. So I heard that it's very unfortunate that you, couldn't, you did not come with your guitar anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us the reason why you <laughs> give up playing guitar? Yeah, the reason I've stopped playing the guitar for about three mm. or four years now. Mm. In fact, I've just, mm. I would say that I've retired from playing the guitar. Mm. It's because I don't have the time. Because mm. counseling takes up a lot of time. Mm. And now with my book, I'm traveling a bit, so 
promoting the book takes up time. Mm. So I really don't have the time to practice because mm. when I perform, I have to give my best. Mm. For anything, when you have to give your best, it requires time. Mm. But at this point, I don't have time because mm. I have other priorities. Priorities of taking care of uh, Chai 316 mm. and now the mm. book. Mm. We also run a course called the Apologetics Discipleship Training Course. Mm. That is mainly to equip people in the marketplace how mm. to defend the gospel. So other priorities have come. So music has not been my main priority right now. So this would be a big disappointment for all the people who have been seeing her performing. Especially I'm also thinking which hymnal should I ask him to, mm. to perform. <laughs> anyway, talking about music, how powerful is music to be a witness for God? It's a very powerful tool for both mm. good and bad. Mm. You know, music can draw people mm. and uh, music can shun people away. Mm. So I've used music Mm. as a very uh, uh, universal tool mm. in sharing my faith. So mm. no matter where I go, when I pick up my instrument, mm. you could find that instant connect, regardless mm. of the culture mm. or ethnicity or anything. I've seen that there has been, mm. a, 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 there's been an amazing opportunity to have a common platform mm. in communicating the gospel through music. You have been traveling and you have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even your wife looks like one of the Nordis. She is, she's from <laughs> Nagaland. So listen to our hearts, hear our spirits sing. A simple song of praise from those you have redeemed. And we will use a word. Of our love, so listen to our hearts. But words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to our hearts. So, how much music, talent, and culture do you find very different from other parts of India where there is a uh, Saragama, but we are. Uh, being influenced by the Christian missionaries and the first convert, we, how do you think there is a potential of music in Northeast? Yeah, the music in the Northeast is more westernized mm. compared to South India, mm. which is much more Indian classical. Mm. But right now, with globalization, music mm. is becoming a very common platform mm. where you know Indian classical is incorporated into the Western music and the Western mm. music is incorporated into the Indian classical. Mm. So, uh, so I, I see that it's becoming a melting point mm. of uh, bringing different genres of music together. Mm. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, the opportunities to learn music mm. in the Northeast is far greater mm. because from childhood, uh, parents encourage children mm. and uh, children are part of the church choirs and mm. singing is so much in, uh, integrated and ingrained mm. from childhood. Mm. Whereas in South India, mm. uh, a lot is to do with academics and mm. music is just a side dish. Mm. Some parents would appreciate it, some parents would not appreciate it. Sometimes people think that you're wasting time in learning mm. music. Mm. Or even to the fact saying that I want to be a professional musician mm. is not necessarily mm. encouraged in the South Indian culture. Mm. Uh, whereas becoming a doctor or an engineer or something else mm. is something that's their goal. So, Dr. Benny, yeah, coming to Chirchanpur is very quick travel. So, yeah. what's, you'll be performing here sincerely bridal. After that, what's your next plan and when are you going back? Okay, well, this is wonderful to be here and mm. uh, my friend uh, Gladi mm. uh, has set up this and I'm so proud of her. and. Mm want to stand by her and her husband, uh, Captain Bobby, and their family, they're good friends of mine. So I didn't want to miss being here at this early part of their setup. And um, yeah, I want to thank and praise God for what he has done through their lives and through the showroom here in Churchadpur. And also good reason to come here, you know. And um, so I go back tomorrow to Imphal 
Mm. And then back to Bangalore, mm. and then travels will continue like that. So what's your next five year, uh, I mean, f f five different countries where you'll be traveling? Is there already fixed travel itinerary or? Yeah, for now, I'll be mostly traveling within the country. Mm. Um, next week, I'll be in uh, Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh along with my wife. Mm. Then we come back and then mm. I go to Rajmandri. But mm. the next international trip would be in Singapore. Mm. Uh, most probably, I'll be leaving on the 22nd of mm. December. We really appreciate you giving uh, precious time despite your very busy schedule. I don't know how, how you manage the energy traveling this much. If anyone from Churchanpur or anyone listening to this interview would like to get hold of the, grab hold of this copy, what are the possible uh, ways that they can order? Yeah, they can just go to uh, beniprasad.com, my mm -hmm. website. Mm. And uh, at the opening page itself, all the information is there. Mm. And again, my book does not have a price. Mm. People decide whatever they want to give. Mm. And uh, for me, this is a gift from God. Mm. I never thought that I could ever write a book. Mm. So it's a miracle that a person who mm. does not like to read and write could end up mm. writing a book. But this book mm. has uh, stories from my travels. Mm. So I've chosen 32 countries mm. out mm. of my 257 mm. countries. Mm. And uh, these stories can be about faith, about miracle about standing against corruption, it can be about pride, mm. uh, it can be about patience, mm. it can be about purpose. Mm. So different uh, different themes mm. are there that, that run through in this book. This and book is not available on Amazon. It is also an, available on Amazon. Do yeah. they have a fixed price in Amazon? In Amazon they have a fixed price, I think so. Mm. Okay. I think so, but, but because mm. Amazon don't allow, uh, mm. uh, you know, name your price. Mm. Whereas uh, on my website, people can name whatever they want to mm. name it. What is the rating right now in Amazon? How I don't you? know. Uh, you don't care I, about the ratings? I don't care about the rating. I mm. don't, uh, uh, mm. well, mm. I don't care about that. I'm not a business uh, man in that way. If, so if, if it has got a good review, is, is there possibilities that we'll be seeing Unthinkable Part 2? I because don't know. Right, writing, writing one itself took me 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not a book person. Mm. So, yeah. So, will it be right to say this is a book for people who don't want to read books? <laughs> sure, for sure. Because it has about 190 mm. pictures inside. Mm. So, many of my friends in the music circle don't mm. like to read. And mm. they're saying that many, this book has so many pictures mm. that makes them want to read the book and some of them have already started to read the book and mm. so yeah i've kept that in mind thank you so much benny yeah. for your wonderful ministry welcome, and testimony yeah. and also we want we want to thank you for coming having yeah. taking taking time to come down to church Anpur, yes. lamka yeah so may your ministry richly bless and through this interview may many people be encouraged thank god you bless so your much. ministry yeah. god bless you thank you Do, would you like to have last message for the people who are listening to you well, I would say that uh, never give up on your dreams, mm. uh, regardless of what the society says, what the family says. Mm. Uh, above all, I, I would say that, you know, pray, mm. put your faith in Jesus, and He's not a hard taskmaster. Uh, don't think that Jesus is there with His rod, trying to correct you all the time. I've seen Him to be a very loving God. Of course, he, he has 
commandments given and when I have followed them, I have seen His blessings upon my life. I, have, I cannot trade my life being a Christian to anything else in this world. And He fulfilled my dreams from being a worthless child written off by everyone now to being a, a blessing to the nations around the world. And God can do the same thing with you. I am no more special than anybody else. If He can do that with my life, He can do that with your life too. God bless you all. We can all into the association and Benny Prasad, Dr. Benny Prasad help you here. The Hovel Pumpia traveling, Nasamay Ben here, fastest traveling in Nalaya, Tobana. The Hovela Communist Gamla, Pasian to Gentel on the line, Pasian to music instruments and Pasian Nasatana Manga. I mean, testimony about it, he comes to a suicide ball, or the Hill Manic Hinwala would compete at any Tamna, Tammy Hinwa, but in it, there is hope beyond the end of the darkness, she hit her in. Tommy interview Tung Tang, he sap the Hamaki ball here, Salam Taylor, the Adding Boy Kamaite in Ale. Salam Tate and Bangi here, the feedback, comment section like YouTube and take a hope. Kitazazel, and two nearing weekend on Tantana Betai, and to Tedosian, Umpion, Mangua.